Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Plus Three Futures and Commodities Show. We are recording about 40 minutes before the close here on Friday, the 31st of May. Uh, on today's show, we have a very special show for you. We are going to take a cruise down the 20,000 foot big picture view at all the markets we follow. Going to give you a view that uh, if you look at dailies or four hours or 30 minutes or 60 minutes, man, it's really going to be eye-opening. So you could stay tuned for that. In addition to that, uh, Barry's got some insight on the indices, including the Dow, as well as a unique look at copper. So uh, my name again is Ben Maldonado and Barry is my partner, Barry Hedarachi. Barry, how we doing? Doing great. Doing great. And I see the ES came down and tagged that one by one nicely at the low today. Mm -hmm. And now we're stuck between that and the full square, the, the 144. Yeah, it's just the life, what's been happening. So, um, well, basically last week we left it at, you know, we talked about this 144, which it seems like we've been doing it every every week. <laughs> mm -hmm. But really, you know, we talked about this um uh, level at 144 degrees, about 5280, 5282, and how, you know, the consequences of holding above it versus below. And you can see um, after that, we had that outside reversal, inside bar, kind of a fake to the upside. And then when that got low got taken out, <sighs> yeah, that was a signal and kaboom, right? We went right through it. And of course, right to our next level within five points of 5200. You know, that was a big move, you know, 53 to uh, 52 to 53, decent mm -hmm. move in um, in a few days. So we had that and um, we'll talk about what to look at next, like what happens next and why we think that. And in order to do that, let's go. Let's look at the Dow first, mm -hmm. because we looked at this last week in reference to uh, these highs. And we talked about how, hey, you know, Nasdaq made a high. Uh, S&P made a high, but the Dow didn't make a high. And that kept us a little bit, you know, not all bullied up, let's just say. <laughs> we were right, really right. cautious. And we wanted to really see a little bit more feedback from the market before we jumped on anything. And and lo and behold, what do we have? You know, the Dow really kind of led the way down and it pulled everything else with it. If you guys can see, we had this zone, sort of support zone drawn in before that and 144 up from the October below. Is right around thirty-seven thousand nine hundred and thirty-four. Let's just say nine hundred and thirties, and that support. So we came down, you know, kind of held in the zone, like the zone we had drawn out. That zone, by the way, is from another square. So you can see they're lining up right in this area, mm -hmm. and we held there, and we're getting a little bit of a bounce off of that, and and that move from high to low was about thirty-six degrees, which. Seems about, you know, that's sort of like the normal uh, movement for a swing or it goes in 36, as you can say. So we'll see what happens. But just to cap that, you know, we could, you know, what kind of hinted at, hinted about it move lower was the Dow not being able to make a new high and following that through kind of paid off. Let's look at the, um, well, this is, now this is interesting. You know, the problem is, you know, we only have so much time every week and we don't, get a chance to look at every chart and from through the every square that we look at. <laughs> so right. you have to kind of key through them quickly. And here we have a calendar uh, day chart for the E-mini. And I don't know if you guys can see it, but there is a, there's a dotted green line, dotted green lines here. Those are your thirds, right? Yep. Those are the thirds and this is a 90. So those are, you know, you can say, you know, we have three thirties in there, but I think if you go to the 60, it might be easier to see. Yeah, there we go. So here you can see what happened. You know, we have a 150 squaring out here, 150 by 150, which was very close to the 144 we were catching on the cash mm -hmm. in the same neighborhood. And then what happened was um, we came down to um, 180 and we ran back up from high to high. That gives us um, that gives us a 60. Mm -hmm. So 60 high to high and we were squaring out. And, you know, that we can call that a high because not only did we do a false break in relation to 60 calendar days prior, but we also did a false break to the highs that we, we came in with. 
And that was an outside data reversal that we had followed by the inside. And this other little uh, try to get up, but really couldn't get over the uh, square. And, and then we sold off, really. I mean, the best part was really the last three days, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, last four days, but the three days really got things moving. So why am I showing this? It's because we've been looking at these charts and this this gives us a little bit of a proof to, you know, should we be coming down? Is this kind of a, can we expect a bigger move or is this just a little correction? And and then we're going to run right back up, right? But looking at the how the squares came in, it looks like this is part of a bigger move. And this is sort of the evidence we were looking for. So let's see, let's see what happens, you know? But, but we have to remember these, these uh, sort of points. These are these are the little data points we have to watch. And this is the um, cash chart that we were going off of. This is the 144 that originally got us keyed into, hey, we could have a high in place mm -hmm. uh, idea. And, and we had the correction, rally back up. We were really looking for, you know, I mean, the low hanging fruit would have been just looking for a lower high. Right. But nope. Not always like that. <laughs> and, and even not even a simple false break. We had this really complicated false break. <laughs> yeah. you know? I mean, it just pushes it all the way to the end. And even mm -hmm. this high, it broke. I mean, it grabbed above uh, on the day, right above the 818 line, the gray line that's there. And, then you know, it just pushed everything. And then the gave it up. Yep. Yeah, and then gave it up. And, of course, we did quarter of a square because we're from that eight and down to this eight right there. Mm -hmm. And all right around this 216 by 144 kind of a um, pattern, right? So if we move it back here, we can see how that lines up just about right. You know, there we go. So it looks like we could, you know, we could have tipped to the downside. And we have, I mean, clearly the Dow was tipping from last week. You know, it was, it was a little bit weaker than usual. So before we get into any more, let's go... You know, like we normally do, let's take a look at the 30 minute chart because mm -hmm. I know a lot of you guys trade shorter time frames. So here we came in, you know, last Friday we left off. I think we talked about these moves. Um, uh, we caught that and then we came left you with 53.25 being the key level and either if we can get above it or not. And you can see it's Sunday, you know, coming into Monday morning, coming into the opening. It was really kind of just sitting on top of it without being able to move, then slip below, and that was it. Once we slip below, you really want to watch it. After that one spike down, here's a retest, and that's the place to sell it. Right? That's those are the those are the easy picking uh, trades. And from there, it it basically just bounced off like a pinball machine, just right through mm -hmm. all the support resistance levels. Came down to fifty two seventy five, kind of consolidated, gave it up. Uh, once it broke through, it came back to re retest it, gave it up. Then we dropped down into the 5239 area, ran back up today. Couldn't quite get up in there. Too much, too many sellers sitting up on there. And yeah. uh, we just flushed it all the way down to 5210 level. And and um, I know we had a 52, what is it, 5200 on the daily chart. So we yep. know, pretty much yeah. came and tapped it. Mm -hmm. And in 30 minutes, we were in the buffer. You can see the momentum took it out a little bit, but the next 30 minute bar is perfectly right on top of the zone. And we rallied up to, and that's where he dropped this line this morning, 5250. There you go. So that's kind of how it worked out. So it, so clearly, we're definitely tipping to the downside. I don't think there's a big question about direction because we were waiting for some pattern. Signs. Things. Yep. Yeah, a little bit of, yeah, some sign from the market. So let's take a, before we get to the weekly, I want to talk about the daily just a little bit. And the way we trade this with the levels, it's fairly easy. You know, anything else you have, like momentum, would lay on top of this. You can look at that as an overlay. And this should be sort of the foundational level. So if, you, if you're tracking these levels with us, then 5282 is really the upside resistance for next week. And it's pretty much the bar today, really. We went from end to end. <laughs> yeah, roughly, yeah. Right? And uh, 5,200 is the downside. So if we can't really get above 5,282, we might push up into, you know, this zone here. The max would be 5,310, but, you know, 52, yeah, 5,275, 80. Right, in, right at the 45 level, that's, that's all I'm talking about. Just right in there. If we can't really get above that, 
and we come down, we're clearly on the next couple of bars, we're going to take out this one by one. And if we do it Monday, Tuesday, then 52 gets taken out, that opens up 5104 to the downside. And they're kind of spaced out in, in big levels. So that's what it looks like. And if we break 52 and, and we get to 51, then I think there's probably some downside left before we turn back up because of the because of the way these cycles expired, you know, th this one yeah. came in and then the next one came in the 144 by 144. So there's a lot of stuff pent up. Now, last week we talked about how if we manage to hold above 5282, let's say 52, yeah, 5282, what that means is, you know, you know, even though we had these other cycles come and expire, there, there, there are probably larger cycles that's pushing it up into another time frame. So we have to basically wait for that. Unless, of course, it starts showing us that it's weaker and it's sort of giving it up at this point. I mean, and for me, the, the big question now is on this next bounce here, do we make a lower high? Can we get above that 144? And do we make a lower high or a higher high? You know, mm -hmm. that's well, the, the yeah. I I think um, long as we're below the one forty four, this fifty two eighty two area. Yep. Um, I mean it. The four. I mean the tilt is the downside. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Selling to the downside. There's no fire question. away. <laughs> yeah, far away. <laughs> Keeping in mind fifty two is here, so it's it's possible we can do an inside bar here on Monday. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then yeah. Then it makes it easier. You know, if the lower high gets taken out, we know where mm -hmm. it's going to get pushed into so that's kind of the that's kind of the level so for next week we actually kind of have two levels we had the original 144 level at 5280 82 8 level right and then we have 5200 level so that's sort of the bracket for next week if we take out 52 you know i think we can get to 51 fast very, very yeah very fast <laughs> <laughs> so that's a very i mean it's a good trade it, those are very good trades to get in on when they're that quick Mm -hmm. uh, so that's it i think um that's what happens and you know we talk a lot about how you know when it's consolidating and just watch your you know watch the powder you know don't be you know getting in there getting paper cuts and the other side of that is you know after these consolidations finish up and the market starts to move you get a decent move so that you know patience actually pays off waiting for it to get some traction on one side so it looks like we had it here and that's the bracket. Um, like I said, if we take out 52, we can go lower. If we take out 5280, 82 level and settle above again like this um, and and be able to um, put in sort of a foundation above that, then I think we can move move higher. But let's see. But right now it, it did tilt down after that false break. You know, that's what kind of gave it away. We talked about it last week. We talked about and we laughed about this inside bar saying, hey, that makes mm -hmm. it easy for next week. And it did. You know, even if you took this one, you were wrong once, but look at the correct one, right? Yeah. But even that, you can manage better if you went to the shorter terms. But that's uh, that's kind of how it worked out. Mm -hmm. In the 30 minute, it was very easy to do that if you saw um, how that came out coming out of Sunday. All right. Is that good? Did you want that's to good? No, that's good coverage. Cover the basics, right? And and th yeah. this is a one by one line that's coming through, like Ben pointed out earlier. And that's a you know pretty solid one by one. And and you can see what happens. These get broken. I mean, here's the last one by one we were tracking. You know, here nice this, move when it yeah, breaks. This far right there, April 4th, is very close to that because that's the first time we came off the highs and tapped mm -hmm. the one by one. Mm -hmm. And of course, we had you know, wasted five days after that, but then we got a good 10 days worth of move. Yep. Um, so breaking up this, we should watch. Like I said, it makes it a little bit easier this time because it's right at, well, actually last time it was exactly at 5,200 also. Yeah, yeah. It all happens right there. Same in same zone. Some strange reason, you know, <laughs> we don't know why. Uh, so yeah, it broke through. So watch that. That's, I think that's, that's really critical. So let's look at a little bit. Um, Check out the weekly. Yeah, let's take a look at the weekly because so the weekly. Okay, well, here's the big picture, right? We've been talking, you know, I mean, there's a reason we put the square back in 2009 and sit here and say, look, guys, I know it's boring, but, you know, this is kind of important. We talked about the 288 mm -hmm. being up that high and how the ABCD kind of could have completed a bigger cycle and a lot, a lot of blah, blah. But, you know, on a weekly chart speaking weekly, we only have like one bar to talk about each week. <laughs> so, 
it's not as exciting, you know what I mean? As as a thirty minute bar, we got where we have a whole lot more action. But, but man, you get some some good information off these bigger picture charts. You do, you really do. And and look what happened this week, you know. And last mm -hmm. week, we left it out by saying, hey, if the low of the week gets taken out, and this is on, you know, you guys can check last week's podcast. If the low gets taken out, you know, then we're going to tip to the downside and we got mm -hmm. low gets taken off and here we are. What's interesting is not only did we take out the low of the high bar, we took out the low of the previous bar a week mm -hmm. prior. Mm -hmm. So that's you know, a little bit weaker than normal, right? It, it's not just weak, but we took out quite a bit. And so we'll have to see how that pans out. But for now, it looks like there's a little bit more downside left. You know, I don't know. How, I don't, you know, we stay try to stay really on the technical side and not bring in any fundamental stuff. But I was talking to um, Ben this morning and we were talking about, well, you know, where to sort of figure out the low for a move, you know, if we stay on the downside and and we thought about the FOMC coming up. So it's very possible that we go down into it and then whatever happens from there, you know, we resolve in mm -hmm. one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And normally, if you go back and mark the FOMC stuff on a chart, you can see how often turns happen plus or minus one day from those events as much as other counts that we have. <laughs> and and I'm sure there are guys that trade just off of that. So yeah, for sure. So that being said, looks like the weekly, you know, we, we could have something here because now we're on the lower end of the um, lower side of uh, the, the, the um, 288 degrees, which comes yeah. up about 5295. And we'll watch that. So basis the weekly long as we're below this, Let's just say three thousand level. It's um, it's it's sort of pointed down, you know. That's fifty three hundred, right? I mean fifty three hundred. Sorry, you know, I did yeah. that last week too. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed later, you know, I said fifty two right. twice, right? And hopefully nobody, you know, since I'm pointing, right? Okay. So yeah, fifty three hundred is really really important. Let's watch that. And I'm gonna leave this, you know, this sort of a, you know, this Gartley here is kind of important. I'll leave it here because. We'll see how it all pans out because if yep. this is significant high, uh, we should get more than one or two weeks down, you know, agree. We haven't even had a correction to that yet. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I agree. I agree yeah. with you. Yeah. It's very important. All right. Let's move on to, yeah, I did put a little extra time on the S and P and the indices because that's a lot of action going on there and a lot of, yep. a lot of things are hanging on this. <laughs> Let's move on to bonds. Um, we moved towards this 119 and a half or so. That was our resistance. We were looking for a bounce coming off of this, this minor square. And we had a uh, Gartley uh, expiring over here. So I would look at this as, you know, we had the first leg up, had a correction, high or low. And, and we can look for some follow through long as this low holds. If this low holds, it's all over. We're done. That was the, you know, that was the, that was a boost we got off that square mm -hmm. and that Gartley. But if that low holds next week, I think uh, we can expect another run, at least to actually test 19 and a half and not just get close to it. We'll see what yeah, happens. the a ABCD gets you like a little over 120, right in the middle oh, of your congestion. Yeah, let me put that on there. Yep. Oh, man, perfect. Yep, right yeah. into your zone. Yep. So we'll leave it on there and see what happens. But boy, I'd be surprised if it gets up there. But it could, right? I mean, uh, yep. depending on how the news news goes. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So let's watch that. Now we know the bracket. We know what to watch. Mm -hmm. Getting back on the weekly. So weekly, not just the daily. You know, daily we had that small square going off of here. But you can, as you can see on the weekly, we had this big 216 by 144 square that happened right there. Mm -hmm. And and like I've explained in the last, you know, all the videos since this low came in, I don't like it when, you know, a, a price takes out the square, then comes back to square again. It's it's sort of sacrilegious to even think that's a proper square, but <laughs> right, right. But hey, you know, they work out, they mutate <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, right? yeah. And it could be. But another interesting thing, you know, we we um came right after the one by two. That's what these lines are. Mm -hmm. And we had a triangle there. You can see the triangles working. So we came down to the line, which is pretty much where the 114 support level is. And we held. And uh, 
So let's watch it for next week. I'm not expecting some huge move, but those are basically where the, you know, that's how we can frame it. I think that's, that's good enough. Agreed. Looking at crude. Violently sideways. Yeah. More of the same, more of the same. <laughs> yeah. Not much to do. And and we've been talking about it being sideways in here so far. There really isn't a big sign of either way. Well, I would say this is more biased to the upside than down. Yeah. Um, long as we're holding above above uh, 75, 73.50 is really our sort of tip over level. Uh, 75, 66 is exactly the quarter of the square. And when we when we look at the monthly crude, we'll see why your bias is is well founded. Oh, all right. I want to see it. Yep. <laughs> no, I really want to see it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I haven't looked at the monthly. I, I saw the weekly the other day, but I haven't. Mm -hmm. Monthly is really good to do. I know we used to do the monthlies, uh, well, every month. Yeah. And, uh, if you guys want to see those again, let us know. We can yeah, let us know. Show, it didn't really seem good. like, it was a great show, but it didn't seem like a lot of people watch it. Well, it's but just we'll, a lot of people just don't have that kind of a timeline. It's, they don't have that perspective. You know, no. Much shorter term. Mm -hmm. Um but I think even though if you're oriented towards the shorter term trades and swing trades on a daily, but it's really good to know where the monthlies are because then you know if a turn on a daily is actually a you know show, showing up inside of a bigger turn uh, on the monthly. You know it, that's right. Really good to know those levels. And anyway, so yeah, not much to add here. I think a little bit more of the same. Uh, Seventy three fifty is really the support level of seventy five. Is a level above that, so it's a bit of a zone there. Not much. I think we're going to continue to look for some chop till we can break out of it. And the, you know, this is expanding, so next week we we'll probably go and make a little bit of a lower low, and maybe they'll keep the expanding triangle going. So that's the thing. And if something's not trending, just you know, nobody's forcing you to trade it. <laughs> so that's right. And here's our marker. You know, this is why we put the box and and. Uh, and so the idea here, guys, was that, you know, we have a quarter square box and we'll see which side it flips. Somehow, I think the middle line, I can't remember how the logic, I, when I drew the square, it was a couple of few weeks ago. Uh, but anyway, that's the thing. Um, that's what we have. And middle square, which is around, middle of the square is right around 81, 82. The lower side is around 74, which is right between the 7350 and, well, very close to 7350. So that's sort of the bracket. And I think we can certainly move all the way down to 73 and the 81, 82 level. And, uh, but a real move to the upside begins, you know, if we're going to get to the 90s and the 100s, we really have to take out the 80, 81 level, which is the center. Mm -hmm. And that's all to add for here. But till then, oh, the other thing is, you know, if you notice the triangle is breaking to the downside. And, you know, as much as we have bias, it's possible, you know, crude is very famous for doing false breaks and then running. So it's it's really possible that we do a false break here. Sure. Freak everybody out and, and, and then take the other side. And if you study the chart for crude, false breaks are everywhere, not just on daily, but, you know, weekly levels. So it's kind of a big deal. All right. Let's look at gold. Not a lot of anything new to report. Everything we talked about last week. So to repeat, um, I think we think the highs are in for now. And the fact that it's, but yet, you know, it's still holding, correcting well above one third of the square, which is very tight. And um, it's so, it's almost going sideways now, which is after the move it had would be fantastic. Yeah, it is going sideways uh, in a very tight range, considering, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So let's see what happens. I think a good healthy correction would be nice. I mean, I love deep corrections, like coming down into here. But right. We're holding mostly, you know, this entire correction is like 80% above even the quarter of a square. So gold remains, well, in demand, right? That's that's what that is. Yes, it is. Um, but we did kind of run up into the square. Let's see how it works out. For now, it's a little bit weak, not quite ready. We'll continue to watch. I can't wait to see the monthly because it's going to probably blow everybody away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And speaking, well, here's longer term. We have the weekly gold. This is back from 99 going up. And we kept talking about this 270 degree level. That's why we stalled out. So now that you know that, let's zoom in a bit. 
Um, so on a weekly basis, you can see like we barely corrected. I mean, we have like one week down and then we have an inside week this week, which sets up the next week really, in, you know, with, with, with the possibility for a run either way. Of course, if we take out this week's low, you know, we could end up taking out, you know, last two weeks lows, three weeks lows in one shot, you know? Um, yeah, that's all possible. Three, yeah, because the, well, all of the three bars, the lows are very close together. That That's a support area right around 23, 36 area, right? Give or take a couple, just to eyeball. Mm -hmm. So if that goes, we can expect, you know, a little bit more of a correction and coming down into, you know, basis weekly, you know, 22, 37, 38, perfectly normal and healthy. Um, so for now, I think the run was good. Enjoy it. Now let it correct and breathe a little bit and give it some room. Right, Ben? That's no a, question. No question. We can all breathe. So copper, I mean, how funny. I was like smiling when I was looking at this this week. We talked about how the high, there were so many signs about even friends calling and asking if they could get into <laughs> copper. Right. I mean, and we and we had a little joke about that, right? Like how right. That, how that psychologist is, just marks highs so perfectly. And um so here we have obviously we have a we have a we I mean now we can say we have a high, but at the time we were calling because we were getting close to resistance. I think we were going off the square from here. And um so yeah, it, um, what's next? I think the correction is good. If you're trading copper, we want it to really hold about like 450, 453. Mm -hmm. That would be um, 90 degrees up. So that's really the level we want to, you know, if it can hold and it's super strong, this is a perfect area to hold and, and then coming, you know, and then bounce. Um, barring that, I mean, anywhere all the way down to these, this, you know, Quarter of the square um, at four thirty is is still very good for copper. It's it's a this is what I would I call like a deep correction, and mm -hmm. it's still good. And at four fifty two, fifty four is really good. So let's see what happens next week. But clearly, there's a correction in play, and we did square out. And I'll tell you, this correction could end up being a sort of a deeper correction down to here, maybe even lower, because I'll show you on the on the weekly what I saw. And and the copper is one of those things when you jump to the weekly, you know, we're kind of low on time, so we kind of run through it. But 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 I think it's important to look at it. Here I was just kind of looking at how close it was to was to a um 216 by 216. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was thinking about the premium on the futures versus if you took the cash cash uh copper and if you adjust for a premium it would probably be right about you know just right about like that so it would be mm -hmm. like one bar off you know so mm -hmm. that i think squared out pretty well but when i saw that then i went back to look at i mean that's where i saw it first because i just wanted to see what the weekly looks like right and and then i was trying to look at oh, you know what else is happening um so you can see we we um well basically first of all how well this chart is working. We had a 108 by 216, stopping it here. Nice. Mm -hmm. Coming off of that low. And then we had 648 by 216, squaring it out here, false break and a big fast move down. Mm -hmm. And then we ran up to the same level of uh, resistance, a little bit above that. And we'll see if it ends up becoming a false break or not. But, you know, very fast move down because it's kind of indicative of a, of a false break, right? Right. And 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 you can see where that came in. It's right there. It's like a very perfect false break, really. Perfect, yeah. And so what that means is we could expect a possible fast move down in four sixty, let's say four sixty seven, um, would be the two hundred and sixteen degree level. So if we can't really hold above that, which we didn't, we can, you know, we can expect a decent correction and maybe down into 435 or some of the daily levels that we talked about. Yeah, to your point, which I'll show on the monthly, the full square or um, the monthly on copper I have is around 441. Mm, okay. And so we can pull all the way back to there and still be very bullish on a monthly basis. Right, right, right. That's true. Well, the other thing that I want to show you guys was if you get this, I mean, we're like within one bar off, so I'll make it one bar. Um, like we did 
uh, low to low, 216 weeks. Mm -hmm. And then from uh, low to high, we did 216 weeks. That's good. So that, yeah. So that 216, 216 week cycle is in place. If it is, you can see, you know, it can really give bigger moves. And because of that, I'm thinking, you know, coming down to $4, 419, 420 might not be out of the question and still uh, be fully, you know, agreed. healthy, right? But yep. I'm thinking of that because when, when we have these cycles like back up to 16, uh, you know, repeating like that, it, it's something worthwhile watching. So that's what I want to show you. And, and so copper might be also resting for a while. <laughs> no, know? that's a good, that's a good look. Very good a look at copper. That, after mm -hmm. that move. Yeah. So, all right. Let me put this here. All right. Let's get back to the daily and. Anything else you want to add to copper? I mean, it looks like all the metals are kind of correcting. It seems like the season, right? Most of the commodities that I follow are correcting. I'll talk about that in my yeah. segment. Mm -hmm. Sort of inhale, exhale. Exactly. Exactly. So here's the dollar. We did 60. This is the square of 60. Mm -hmm. um, we thought because of the narrow range and, and the way the dollar was setting up the pattern, we were using the square of 60 and you know this 30 by 30 was squaring out it was right along with the abcd moving up from this low back from december and we were looking for some kind of a correction and you know we're still it's kind of ongoing we're still going but today's like the day where everything's pulling into like a gan line i'm getting a real gan line so here's mm -hmm. here's that one by two so here we go uh where you know it's drawn if it's actually one by two drawn from a corner we didn't even need this low to be there but there's that low and then we mm -hmm. have here one two three four and five right we tapped it today and so you know if, if this gives out at this point we're going to go lower you know dollar is going to get a little bit weaker probably go and blow out this 103.95 level maybe uh, do a false break under, under this line before we're flipping around Or, you know, uh, this line's going to hold and we're going to start ramping back up again and eventually take out the 50% of the square. Until mm -hmm. we take this out, you know, I don't think dollar is going to be in any kind of a big bull market yet. I mean, there is a bull market under the surface <laughs> that's building up, as you can see, right? Even from last July, you can see the higher higher lows are forming. Right. So it's there. Uh, but for the short term, I think if this uh, trend line holds, we can expect some kind of a bounce at least it's at 106 uh, 10 area which is kind of level of the square but i think i'm afraid if the line goes we're probably going to go up and do at least spook everybody below 103 90 that area and and if that gives out then i think next stop is basically going back down to 102 so mm -hmm. got a lot of a lot of room to run We'll see how it works out but i think the gan line here not every time again every gan line has a lot of weight but i think there are times when a GAN line can give you a lot of info, and this is one of those times. So, sure. Uh, let's see, let's see how that works out. What else? Let's go weekly. To, let's go to the weekly. Chopping. We, yeah, it's chop, and we're in this, you know, potentially a big triangle. We can draw mm -hmm. a line from here. Either way, uh, we're contracting, which means at some point, and I don't know how many weeks, you know, dollar is going to actually break out. And and looks like it's going to break to the upside. We'll see. In the meantime, it's holding above the one third of the square, right there, one hundred four and a quarter. If it can hold above that, I think we're in good shape. That's why I talked about that, you know, one hundred three ninety five level, which is mm -hmm. right in here. So it's possible it comes down into here, kind of you know, do a false break or some such, and then then move higher. We'll see what happens. The, the, the tip off here is that we took out the low from last week, which was an inside bar. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how we have to map this. So you have to look at the details. And so if next week we continue lower, um, if we take out this week's low, clearly you know, we have a little bit more downside. Man, they're ripping ES higher into the close. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> I don't know what the news is, but good Lord. And, you know, funny enough. Let's see. Let's put the e break to ES. We got breaking news. <laughs> breaking, there you go. Breaking news. <laughs> breaking news. Coming right off the 52 level, right? Yep. So clearly we're going to go and test that 53 that we just finished talking about just, wow. just uh, minutes ago. 
Right. Yeah, well, there must be some news. We're not watching news. Well, that's a fine finish for a busy week. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what a move. The hell, what the hell was the news? I don't know. I didn't have time. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I haven't, uh, yeah. I haven't had any news. Um, looks, I mean, looks a little option related, but you know, mm -hmm. well, that we'll find out. But anyway, the, the point is it went, you know, this is how our levels work. We came off 5210, basically stopped at 5304 level. <laughs> that's, Amazing. That's the, uh, that's a, it's a way out. It's a great ending for a busy week. Yes, sir. And, uh, and look at it. Look at the, uh, I mean, the only two levels we talked about, right? Talked about, right. Oh, if we can hold 52, 53, boom. Yep. 5,200 to exactly top of the zone, 5,310. Yep. So, so does, that us, <laughs> does that change? Does that change? Keep anything? us guessing for next week. <laughs> exactly. I was going to say, does that change anything for next week? I think so. I mean, well, it doesn't change in terms of levels because we still only have that. But unfortunately, it's going to be the same as last week. Because we were sitting right on top of uh, the score of 144. Yep. But still, it you know, it looks like we did tip down. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens next week. I think everything we talked about for the S&P still holds. So we'll leave it at that. Let's move on to the, uh, did we do the weekly dollar? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We were on weekly dollar when that happened. Yeah. We talked yeah. about all of that. Let's move on to the daily euro. Euro. Yeah. Euro. Pretty much the same snapshot as last week. We talked about the 108 level and how we, you know, the euro got on top of it. And long as it's above that, we could trend higher. So just keep that in mind and keep the uh, the levels of the dollar we talked about. You know, if the lows go, it could go a little uh, lower. So clearly, if we're holding about 108, uh, we could, it's much easier for it to drift higher. So I would just keep that in mind. Anything you want to add to the euro? We're good. No, we're good. Yeah. So if you go to the weekly, uh, the picture is a little bit clearer in the sense, yeah, it's been a very tight, very well managed range, mm -hmm. and now we are. You can see, you know, we've had three weeks, definitely the last two weeks, uh, above one hundred eight, and this week we basically took out the high end, low of last week's inside bar. Mm. So not a lot of clarity, but I think what that means is probably more sideways. Yeah. But as long as we're above 108, you know, expect expect it to be more on the positive side, and keep an eye on the triangle that's forming here. It's a weekly, so it might take a little longer to trigger everything. But you know, keep that in mind. Let me see what else we have to cover here. And you are covering natural gas. You're covering everything today. On oh, from a monthly perspective, monthly yeah. Perspective. Okay. So mm -hmm. natural gas, not much. We came up to the, uh, the three quarters. Actually, 50%. We went from 50% to the quarter of the square. And that's a pretty good movement. So some kind of a correction is expected. And I would expect yeah. it to be in correction mode. And watch your like domestic <laughs> systems to give you the next signal. Mm -hmm. But basically, it looks like the lows are in. And once we take out the high, uh, right around um, 296, I think we can expect a move higher. To test a 90 degree level, which would be about 437. Yeah. All right. And next we have the Hang Sang and the Hang Sick. Hang Sick. <laughs> if I only traded this, right? Because, right. So we got the high. We were looking for a correction. We got the correction. We were talking about, you know, this 18, 18,054 was resistance on the way up. And that's the way we kind of stalled right there. Mm -hmm. uh, once we hit the resistance, we expected some kind of a square, and we're we're starting to take out the quarter and moving towards the one third of the square, which is an eighteen thousand fifty four number. Just happens to be smack in the middle of it. So, ideally, if the market's strong, I think we should hold above the one third, which is right around um, let's say seventeen thousand eight hundred and sixty seven, sixty eight, right in that range. Uh, that would be, you know, I think we could expect a good pickup recovering from that. If we take that out, I think a much healthier, what I call a deeper correction would be the 17,068 area, which is 50% mm -hmm. of the square, 36 up from the high. Uh, that would be the next stop. So we really, you know, I think it's pretty clear where, where the support is. That's all I got. 
let's uh, let me put it back to you. Let's go through the uh, go through the the big charts. Yeah, big picture. All right. So Ben, we had this 144 square that came mm -hmm. in very clean. Mm -hmm. And normally, you know, following a square like that, you do have some kind of a correction, decent correction. Yeah. And, and we might have the starts of it, the beginning of it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what what I think we got this week was we got confirmation that this is a false break up here. Right. Right? It 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 broke, came back and tested, couldn't make it. And now we've lost the half square. Even with the monster rally in the last half hour, we still closed below this half square. Yeah. And, and that's that's the key level right now. It's 18,638, call it. Mm -hmm. um, if we can get above that, then it can can you know attack this structure here. But if it if we get stuck below that, then it's you know it's down to this this one by one trend line that's gonna come come into play. So and of course we're closing right near it you know not far so that's that's the key level for next week in 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 the way i look at this uh once we did pick pick a side on here if if we get stuck below it the focus becomes this full square and you can see how important that is because once we got below it and got stuck you know there was the risk that we could have a big correction and then we got back above it and got out of danger mm -hmm. So this this to me the key level is here next week. And we'll see. Right. We'll yeah. we'll see if yeah. that late rally was indicative of anything major or just, you know, uh, like you said, option related garbage. Right. Here's the here's your weekly. And you can see how important the low is. Yeah. On a weekly basis, this uh eighteen two oh eight, that's the key number. And that's the 90 up from the uh, COVID lows. Right. So, and this week we tested it. You know, that is a legitimate test. We had it pulled back and, and got a good bounce off it. So if we, as long as we stay on top of this, you know, you could, you could see us going up and completing this, um, this ABCD from the October 22 lows. But if we take it out, then it's a whole other story. It's all, then, then this is all a false break on a weekly basis. So that you see why that level is so key. Yeah. Yeah. And now let's, let's look at the first um, of the monthlies. We'll start with NQ and you can see why it's very important on a monthly basis. Wow. Yeah. So 18, call it 18, 800, just to round, round it out. That's the key level on for monthly. Mm -hmm. Cause remember we did a big, big square from a monthly standpoint right here right we did one 144 plus another 144 is 288 and that's within you know a month of the high uh -huh. a month or two of the high so we'll have to see if um if we can get above this this full square on a monthly basis the the thing to to look at though and when i was looking at these monthlies is look at this angle yeah. i mean it, it's just not sustainable <laughs> yeah. um the longer it goes the the more unstable it gets but you know it's it's holding for now we know the key level right there yeah this 108 level from uh from the lows so we'll watch it and see yep. anything you want to add on the monthly here well just that when they run away, you know, they can really go. So it's very difficult to catch a top, but we can always catch the term. So that's yeah. that's the way to look at it. And I you know, there is an ABCD in there. Where does that take us? Looks a little higher, right? Maybe a quarter yep. of the square, right about up in there? here. Yeah, right about okay. just under right. twenty thousand, right in there. Uh -huh. And that would give you what a seventy two degree move. Yeah. On a monthly, which is kind of poetic, you know. Yeah. So, all right. Very good. So we know the from the daily what level we got to get on top of. Yeah. Right there, 18630. Get on top of that, and then it starts opening other things up, and you can see how they sort of match up with the bigger picture. All right, let's take a look at Bitcoin daily. Here's here's why this whole consolidation looks bullish. Mm -hmm. The support. I mean, this is a support zone. It's pretty wide, but I, I, I figured, you know, let's let's mark this support zone off, and look, we're doing this whole thing well above support. Right. 
So, you know, and it's basically it's respecting this channel pretty well. You know, we could come down here and test the channel, go back up again, come back down and test the channel. Then we're right on support. Mm -hmm. And that's in, you know, call it 49 to 52, 53,000 is your, is your pretty solid support. To me, this looks bullish. It's resting up. It's chopping around, you know, and maybe we get a false break with this and test this support level before it's ready for the next leg up. Mm -hmm. And that, that's your daily. Let's look at the monthly Bitcoin. And if you remember gold, if it if this thing is chopping around here for a yeah. while, it's mm -hmm. chopping around at the previous highs. And we know how that resolved for gold, right? Yep. And as long as it can hold here on a monthly basis, it's around 54. 54 yeah. And on the daily, you see it's like 48, 49 to 52. So it's in, in that, call it 50,000 area. As long as it holds above that, it's it's still pretty bullish. Big picture, too. Anything to add here on Bitcoin? Yeah, it just looks like a sort of a smooth correction so far. And uh, yeah, no, we got the rest of it. Okay. Daily, weekly. Okay. Let's look at ES monthly. So we have a monthly look there. My goodness. <laughs> and look where we're closing the month. Oh, boy. Right on the 288. Mm-hmm. And remember, here is 180. So this is a super significant time frame, big picture. Big picture and, is a vertical, man. That's what's happening. <laughs> and, and oh, yeah, you know, I was trying to put a, I was like, this is a one by one. I was seeing what is a one by one, two by one, even is not, not anywhere near that. This is like, more like more an like, eight by one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, we don't know if the blow off's going to continue yet on a monthly basis because we are just right at the number. Yeah, and we here need some time. Yeah. It's around 5,300. Above 5,300, monthly basis bullish. Below 5,300, it's suspect. Yeah. At least for a correction, right? We could correct all the way down to here and still be bullish. And that's 4,730, 4,700. You know, if we came down here and just tested this high, it's still bullish. But it's a hell of a correction from here. So yeah. we got to see what happens next month. We did have an up bar this month. I thought we were going to be closing below this key level, but uh, they rescued it at the end and they closed it right on it. Yeah. So right on it. There you have it. Mm -hmm. Very we good. know that we know the numbers. That's your monthly. Mm -hmm. um little preamble before we get into all the monthlies the commodities in general on a daily basis which is what we like to share on this show for ideas is the dailies pretty much across the board they're all correcting the grains are pulling back uh the softs have pulled back uh the metals are pulling back crude is sideways nat gas as barry showed you made a high and it's pulling back so when, when I was talking with Barry about what we should do on the show, he said, hey, let's let's look at the bigger picture stuff. Let's look at the, you know, the 20,000 foot view because most people don't spend a lot of time on them, but it can give you really good insights into what's going on in the in the major trends. So we're going to take a quick turn through all the uh, the the monthlies on all the markets we follow. Here's your 30 year bond. And as you can see from this chart, why Barry and I have been bearish and, and remain bigger picture bearish. Uh, this month we had an inside bar, right? Mm -hmm. um, so maybe, you know, we can watch the high and the low to see which one gets taken out first and it can give us a clue which way we're going. Bigger picture, I mean, we could rally all the way up to this full square here, which is around 132 and still be super bearish. So, um, the overall big picture is down and remains down. Uh, the low here was decent, but you know, as Barry said, uh, when, when he talks about it on the, on the daily and the weekly, it just, it doesn't seem like it, it finished there yet. So um, this is, this is the reason why on this, this is the, I think I talked about this before. This is a 40 year trend line that we broke. That held for 40 years. <laughs> you don't see that very often. So it's why it was significant. It's why the, the tide changed. And 
you know, continues to be bearish right now until we sort of see some higher highs and higher lows, which we haven't seen in this market in a long time, a long time on a monthly basis. Um, anything to add here on bonds? Uh, no, but I see that bonds also ended in a uh, Gartley expiring at the high, starting with the 2016 high being the X and mm -hmm. there's an A, B, C, D, and then there's boom, you know, it ran up. Right. So no, just, I just noticed that. And it's, it's a hell of a sell off coming off of that high. Yeah, it is. Back in 2020. So yeah, no, it looks good. Looks good. All it's right, really good to see it because I just noticed how the low that I was talking about, you know, the little breakout didn't quite finish. It's sitting right on top of that uh, support, you know, basically that entire thing starting about 98 to about 2008, that 10 years of price action is right in the middle of that, right there. Right, yeah. right there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if we lose that, it's yeah. the next leg down. Exactly. exactly. We'll see. Yep. We'll see. Are we going to get a repeat of the 80s? Who knows? Late 70s, early 80s. We'll see. All right, let's jump over to the grains. Take a look at them. Here's wheat. Nice up bar for the month. Uh, thought thought we might push higher, but we've seen some profit taking come in on the lower time frames. You see it sort of uh, a correction has started. High to low back in 07. We did 28 months here. High to low, we did 26. Nice little false break here at the low with these previous lows and then a reversal. So I think it's up out of the hole. Now we see where this correction comes back to. You know, it could come back to here, which was that high before, as it was going in to make the low around 650. Or it could come all the way back to the half square and still be super bullish. And the half square is around 608, 607. That's wheat. Just feel free to jump in if you got anything to add. No, it's looking good. Looks great. Up, up three months. So. Yep. Correction's not unheard of here. Yeah. Here's corn. Now, this one is is interesting. That's a pretty ugly monthly bar for an up <laughs> bar, <laughs> right? Yeah. We made a, made a nice high, closed on the low. Could be a little cautious on corn right now. It's more like a popcorn cut chart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's got to it's gotta find its... Uh, it's level here. The really important is the half square. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think is, that's the level to watch right now. Yeah, 431, 430. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you could see what it what it's sitting on top of, that whole sideways structure from 2014 to 2020. So we want to make sure we hold this area here. And that's corn. Mm -hmm. Let's jump to soybeans. Decent up bar. Yeah at least closed above the high of that inside bar last month. So we have an up bar still in this triangle. You can see that corn and uh, and soybeans are behind wheat in that they still got to break the downtrend line from those yeah. highs previously. Mm -hmm. We were down 20 months, so that that's a good correction. And you know, now, structurally, they're both coming off of good support. So that's they have that you, going for them. Yep. Sitting on top of that. 2014 to 2020, mm -hmm. you know, sort of consolidation. And this is what we talk about in in commodities. You get these long sideways and then big moves. And you'll see it when you look at the monthlies. You'll see it in a lot of these charts. All right, let's jump over to the softs. Here's sugar. So sugar, if it was going to be super bullish, I mean, we did this ABCD up. And if yeah. it was going to be super bullish, I would want to have seen it hold this structure here. Mm -hmm. And we're just kind of at the bottom half of it. Right. What it looks like it's, it's setting up to do is maybe false break with this and then mm -hmm. find support and go. Yeah. But until we see that and see some sort of reversal, monthly basis, it's just another down bar. And we close below this half square around 1860. So... Nothing to do on the long side in sugar yet. I mean, it ran up two squares, ending with the ABCD. Mm -hmm. So some kind of correction is is fine. And right now it's about fifty percent, right? So yeah. So if we if we can come down, find footing, I'd love to see a false break here, and then a reversal. That would be a, a really nice setup. All right, that's sugar. Here's cotton. So cotton's a lot like sugar. Been correcting. We had this really. Nice sideways move, broke up out of it, but then couldn't handle it and then came right back in. And recently, the thing that's got my attention is 
we have a false break setup where we just have a, a marginally lower low than we yeah. had previously mm -hmm. and and it reversed pretty hard off of that on the lower time frames so let's watch here and see if we can get an up bar on a monthly basis and that that might be the trigger to uh if to not we have thing. that uh 22 low that's another potential yeah right here right there. Mm -hmm. yep so we're watching they're basing watching we haven't mentioned much about them on the uh on the regular show because of you know, there's just nothing to do yet. Let's go to the star of the first half of the year. Coco. And this is what we try what to catch. Ride. What a ride. Yeah. What a ride. But look, you had a seven-year base. Mm. You know, this is the boring part. Nobody wants to nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody's interested in it. And and then you get this. And what it didn't break out in some kind of a surprise. It really did it very gently, very quietly. <laughs> yeah. And then the bars got they huge. They just got really bigger got and going. bigger, right? Yeah. People woke up at some point and boom. And but look how harmonic this is, Barry. I mean, look at look at where we we topped on a timing, 360. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. And and the and the half square. I mean, just really nice. Beautiful, you know, beautiful stuff. Yeah. Three 180 by 360. And you know volatility hasn't settled in. It's still, you know, quite volatile. So. I know the bars are huge, but this thing might be setting up for a decent short actually now. Yeah. And remember, this high came in within days of a CNBC feature on Coco. Mm -hmm. I remember that. I posted it, and, and I was like, "There you go. There's your there's your ring in the bell." And there were a couple of a couple of magazine covers too. Something about chocolate, <laughs> chocolate and cocoa. I remember. Right. That. Unbelievable. Unbelievable how that works. All right, let's jump to the next one. This is one of our favorite charts longer term, and that's coffee. Mm -hmm. So recently we broke out of this triangle, had a big move up. This last month we have an inside bar. But if we just do another triangle on top of this half square, it's bullish. It's bullish, yeah. And if we take out this month's high, it's going to be – it might be getting started. So, yep. And you see mm -hmm. how this thing goes when it breaks triangles, man. They're, mm -hmm. they're pretty, pretty violent moves. So, this one looks good on a monthly, weekly, daily basis. We just got to let it, you know, absorb and digest this first move up and then catch the next breakout for the next move. Mm -hmm. But coffee looks good on a big picture basis. All right, with that, that's coffee. Let's jump to the metals. I've referenced gold a lot when looking at these longer term charts because here was basically a two and a half year consolidation in gold. And everyone was so frustrated and saying, oh, it's going back to 1200. It's going back to 1000. It's going to 1600. This is horrible. You know, why are you wasting your time with gold? This whole mess was done on top of previous highs. Mm -hmm. And you and I kept saying, I know it's frustrating. I know it's boring. I know it's mm -hmm. dull, but it's bullish yeah, because it's consolidating in with a very, very positive structure. Right. And then of course we got that move up. Um, now for gold, I mean the, the, the full square on a monthly basis is right here around 2315, 2314. Mm -hmm. As long as we hold above that and can go sideways or chop around, look how bullish that is. I mean, we could we could come all the way back to like 2060 and still be bullish. Yep. I mean, there's so much there's so much room there. So, mm -hmm. um, gold looks good. I do believe we topped short term. So let's watch and see how the correction plays out. Next, let's go to silver. Mm -hmm. Here's another good example. This triangle was forming on top of this six, seven, eight year base. And there's wow. your breakout. Yeah. So if you look at this on a monthly basis, he is the full square here. Call it 2660. As long as we're above that, we're in good shape. It's in good shape on gold. I mean, on yeah. silver. Yeah. Um, Anything else you want to mention about silver? No, we're good. I think we I think clearly we broke out long as this month's lows held. 
I think we're in good shape. And the low happens to be right on the 45. Yeah. Yeah. Which is good. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's jump to copper, which Barry talked about. Again, the power of these triangles when you're looking at these big picture things. Yeah. So here's the um the full square I was talking about, 441. We can just go sideways, chop around, you know, in this half square up here. Again, it's super bullish, you know, because you're basically in this mess here and on top of this mess up here which is the definition of bullish structure when you're sitting on top of previous price action. So copper looks good. This is this is my line in the sand for a monthly basis, 441. I mean, theoretically, we could pull back right to the apex and still be okay. You know, that would be 380. Um, but here is, is the optimal one for the bulls. Bulls were on top of that. All right, next let's go to... Karud. Here's why I was talking about being your bullishness and crude is uh, played out with the monthly. So we're doing this triangle. And where's the triangle sitting on top of, Barry? All that support. <laughs> <laughs> all, yeah. all, you know, from 2015 to 2020. Yeah. yeah. That's five years worth of price action that it's basically chopping on top of. Yeah. And winding up on. Yep. We saw that in gold. We saw it in silver. We see it in other metals. Um, copper, these sort of formations, while they're going to frustrate you, and nobody's talking about crude bullishly right now, the setup is there. So just mm -hmm. patiently watch it, wait for the breakout, and then this thing's going to fly. And the odds favor, because of the way it's triangulating, that it's doing it, going to do it in a bullish manner. All right, let's go to net gas, the last one. Main thing to take off of this chart, which is something we've talked about several times on the on the show, the lows came in at places of historical support going back to the early 90s, mid-90s. Yeah. Nice monthly bar, right? Broke out. Uh, now let's see how this correction plays. Get a nice pullback with a higher low here. Or it's, it, ideally, we'll do an inside bar, right? Since that's such a big bar. But as long as uh, as long as we don't come down and violate this um, 165 level on a big picture basis, you know, this thing looks like the lows are in. So, and that's it for the monthlies. It's a All quick right. trip around, but w looking at them, Barry, what's your what's your synopsis for the for the commodities in these different markets? What I'm seeing here, and I, if you look at all of it going back is that most of them are putting in lows. Yeah. Which means in the next two to three years, we can expect them all to be higher from where they are today. That's kind of what I'm picking up. Yeah. I mean, we're not, they're not exactly hanging around highs. Other than cocoa, nope. Other than cocoa, yeah. <laughs> uh, most of them, most of them, right? Like right. natural gas. And, and you look at some of these things. Accrued. Other than cocoa, gold, yeah. Crude. Uh, we look at all the grains. The Cotton. grains are near the lows. The mm -hmm. softs are near lows. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The so metals are the metals are the ones that are near the highs in cocoa. Yeah. But everything Yeah, else... metals. I think after the metal correction, metals could also, you know, they had definitely have room to run. So we'll see how it, it it's really, now it depends on, you know, where is the correction going to end? So then right. it just, we have to just, that's why it's, it's just much easier to play leg by leg, you know, as they, as they come in. Absolutely. I mean, listen, I know we say we're at a critical time a lot, it's really interesting how a lot of these markets are like the ES is, you know, at 5,300, it's on the knife's edge. NASDAQ is around <laughs> 18,600. It's on the, the knife's edge where it can go either way. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we're not worried about having to predict it because that's not what we do. We let price tell us what's most likely to come next. Mm -hmm. And we're in that phase. It requires, you know, a lot of diligence, a lot of observation, and um, and based on that, then we can weigh the probabilities and and make risk reward decisions. And so, mm -hmm. rest up this weekend because um, next week uh, is more data, and more data means uh, we can recalculate the odds and see if there's a decent setup that uh, that we choose to play in.
that's kind of where we are. Uh, what are you what are you focusing on next week, Barry? Well, S and P for sure. I think volatility there is not going anywhere. I think it's even though we might have a quiet day here and there, but I think there are some bigger moves setting up. Watching that dollars resting, so not much to do there. Watching the bonds. Um, what else? That's about it. There are a couple of commodities that we're watching, you know, watching mm -hmm. where the coffee, how coffee sets up, waiting for that to finish up and, and watching. Grains, yeah. Yeah, grains. But other than that, S&P is sort of like the big thing to watch at the at the moment because, because it is at a critical, critical point and we just came back to it after 60 days. <laughs> so we're in the same kind of spot waiting for it to resolve, you know, like we looked at in the chart. So that's a big deal. And bonds on the other side. So both of those, and maybe once they get moving, you know, we might have the currencies moving again. But, you know, a lot of the things, like you said, in the grains, not the, just the grains, but the commodities, a lot of things are a little bit slow, but mm -hmm. the ones that are moving are pretty active. So I think it's always good to focus on the active stuff. Absolutely. Which, yeah. Well, listen, we appreciate everybody uh, listening to the show. Please make sure to like, subscribe, uh, share share the links with your friends, share the videos with your friends. We appreciate the help in, in growing the channel. And have a great week, everybody, and we'll talk next week. All right. Thanks, Ben. Good job. And we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.